Welcome to this Microgen DB Clarity developer demonstration. In this video, you see how to connect to an external database. You learn more about the external data format. And you see how to create a basic SQL rule. All this information is available in the Introducing the SQL Editor tutorial on the DB Clarity developer website. We'll start with the database connection. The database server connection in the Workspace Navigator allows you to browse external databases. You can view your schemas, browse tables, and write SQL statements in a SQL editor. To start by creating a connection and logging into your connection, I'm going to use a schema that I have available, the HR schema, which is a sample schema in the Oracle database. You can browse your tables, expanding the tables node and seeing the tables that you have available. Using the right click on the context menu, you can look at the data within that table. By invoking that content, I see the select statement. The select statement is written into the SQL editor and the output is shown in the results window below. You can also write your own queries or edit queries created. For example, I can add a WHERE clause. and execute that query. Each time the select statement is shown in a window and the output is written to screen. If I wanted to extend that and add a parameter or a bind variable, I can do the same. The SQL editor provides the ability to parse parameters, so it allows you to create the parameters within your query. In this case it's a string, and I can execute the query. Adding the parameter and completing the statement. But the power of DB Clarity Developer is not the SQL Editor. You're using this for ad hoc queries. The power is the ability to create visual queries using a data source. So we'll close the SQL Editor and create a new project. And this particular project is against the Oracle database for the HR schema. And if I double click on my project, it opens it in a new area. I'll just switch the display to see that I have nothing in that project. And I'm interested to start with to create the external data format. So I'll create a new external data format. I'll call it HR EDF. Going back to my database connection, I can select all of the tables and simply drag them onto that EDF to create the definitions. So the whole definition has come in from the database and by saving that, if I return to my project, I've found that these definitions are now available within that project. So I can now use this data source as the basis of my queries. So the EDF, or the External Data Format, defines the structure of the external data received from and sent to the database. And it is based on existing database structures. So let's create a new SQL rule. When you start creating your SQL rule, you have a toolbox of elements that you can use to drag onto the work surfaces. We'll start by selecting the table, dragging that onto the work surface, and if I double click, you'll see that I need to define what the EDF reference is and the table name is. So instead, I'll drag those elements directly from the EDF. So I'm, going, I'm interested in countries and locations, I can drag both of those onto the work surface. And if I double click now, you'll see that it's defined the EDF reference and the table name. So it's much easier to use those sources directly. And I need to join them as I'm using two elements. And the easiest way to do that is using the shift key. 
and drawing in the links. Now we need to join based on the condition. And the condition in this case is that the country's country ID is equal to the location's country ID. Notice the double equality sign used in this join clause. Now we're interested in very specific countries. So what we'll do is add a filter condition. Once again, we need to link those. And consider the filter. I'm interested in the region ID equal to 2. So I'm going to restrict my the records returned to a specific region. Find I need to decide on what values are going to be displayed in the output. So I'll do the select part of the statement at this point. I'm going to select all and then deselect the ones I'm not interested in. At the moment, I don't want to see any of the ID columns, and so I'll remove those from the query. And I may move a few of the columns around to order the output. So the final select block is what is displayed in the output report. Let's have a look at the SQL created. Notice the select statement and the columns that we've chosen. The single equality sign and the restriction of the WHERE clause where I'm only interested in region 2. I can now execute that query and the output is displayed below. In the next demonstration, we'll look at how we can deploy these using the EDFs, either directly to the database or as part of a deployment package. For more information on this and other demonstrations, please visit our website.